I'll be talking about the rest of MATLAB script to implement leapfrog method to solve advection equation. So we talked about how to create two sets of initial conditions because we need uh, the values at time equal n and n minus 1 to create the values at n plus 1. So that was about leapfrog. If you remember, go back to the lecture notes and look at how leapfrog is implemented. So in the leapfrog, the equation we had was un plus 1 minus un minus 1 and then uh, divided by 2 delta t plus v times this term equals 0. And you see that for uh, to solve for n plus 1, we need to know n minus 1 as well as n. So we need two initial conditions. So I go back to the MATLAB script. And uh, look at how we can implement the rest of it. So this is the second initial condition we have to create using now we have to use the first order method I use upwind scheme. So remember when alpha is less than zero in upwind scheme we use forward in space and so this is i plus one on i and if alpha is less than zero uh, it's bigger than zero then we have to use backward in space it's i i minus one. In both cases it's forward in time. So in time I have i i minus one here's i i minus one. So Time derivative doesn't change, only we flip this, uh, the, the spatial discretization from forward to backward unit depending on alpha. Now here is basically the gist of leapfrog. So remember, in leapfrog we had u n plus 1 at point i minus u n minus 1 at point i. So this is minus, if you take it to the left side, that is equal to negative alpha, and then u n i plus 1 minus u n i minus 1. That's exactly the equation we had we had right here. So n plus 1 is equal to n minus 1 plus, uh, minus alpha times n i plus 1 and i minus 1. And that's exactly what we have in this equation. Anyways, so we can run the code now after doing the after doing so we can plot the solution, which is u, on, on spatial and temporal axes. So this is just to uh, take steel stationary images, and this is to take animation. So to make animation, you have to plot the concentration of u at every time, and then give like fraction of a second pause, and then erase this plot and replot the next the solution the next time point. So here it is, if you run the code. So remember, I started with a step function. So initially it was a step function at about zero right here. So that means there is a high concentration here and then suddenly it goes to zero. We want to see how this uh, change in concentration propagates in time and makes it diffuse in the solution. There is a velocity from left to right. That's why alpha is positive is equal to two. So as the flow goes from the left to right, you see the concentration actually goes forward. This is like pretty much like a plug flow. Right. Now what you see is that they, these are the numerical instabilities. So you see that there is this these wiggles actually show up in the, in the back of the wave. But the good thing is these oscillations don't grow in time. So it looks like they're almost constant. The magnitude doesn't change in time much. So that is conditional stability, which means this is stable. We do get errors, we do get um, oscillations and weird um, uh, weird numerical, uh, numerical error here, but the thing is, this doesn't grow in time, this doesn't spoil the whole solution after a long time. Alright, now what if I change v to make, make alpha bigger than 1? So, I'm going to change my v a little bit, such that, so remember alpha was 0.8 before, now if I run the code, you get alpha equal 1.0051, so that's a bit bigger than 1. And you see what happens. Initially it's fine, but then this instability suddenly grows in time. That's because alpha is bigger than 1 and the method is unconditionally stable. Well, sorry, it's conditionally stable, but because for alpha you stepped into the in unstable regime, so the instability grows over time. And you see what I, what I mean by that. All right. So um, that was about leap frog. So I'm going to switch to Max Fredericks for now.
So in this simulation, we go back to Max Fredericks. In Max Fredericks, we basically do the same thing as the plot. So there's no change from here all the way to this paragraph where we just create Max Frederick. Even the condition we have to create is the same as the plot. We need two sets of initial condition because Max Fredericks also requires uh, two time two previous time points. If you go back to Max Fredericks, so Max Fredericks, if you recall, this is Max Fredericks, uh, or if you will, I uh, can go back to here. On page 173, to create n plus 1, you need to know values at time n, and Just make sure I'm showing the right thing. Yeah, so basically, I have to take it back. So for max matrix, we need uh, we need uh, only the last only the last time step. So to create n plus one, we only need to know n, and everywhere else is n other than this time. Let's so go back here. So to compare with the max to compare with the loop file. I actually tend to use the second initial condition the same as before, although we don't need it for max matrix. But we want to compare with leapfrog and see how the solutions uh, how the solution is compared. So I create a second time step using uh, forward using uh, up in scheme again, and then this part is just the uh, max matrix where u n plus one at point x i is equal to average of uh, un i plus 1 i minus 1, that's the average term, and then minus alpha over 2, and then times the central definite space, which is i plus 1 minus i minus 1 at time n. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing, we're going to run the simulation with the step function and see how it goes. In the next, uh, in the next run, we're going to increase alpha uh, to be something bigger than 1. So for now, alpha is 0.8 exactly as in leapfrog. So here's alpha 0.8. And now you can see that there's no weird oscillations even before the wave. So initially there's a plug here. Velocity is from left to right. So the, the step function should move from left to right. Or the concentration should diffuse from left to right. And you see that there's no wiggle oscillations actually on, on this side. So I'm going to stop here and show you exactly what happened to leapfrog again. So I go to, let's go back to leapfrog and rerun it. With alpha less than 1. So here's alpha less than 1. This is leapfrog. So look at these oscillations that are created. Okay, so that is because in lax matrix we have numerical viscosity, and if you remember, numerical viscosity kills these these oscillations. It actually diffuses them, so you know, things go away quickly. Exactly like there's friction here for these waves. All right, so let me stop this and then go back to lax matrix. So let's look at that again. So here's lax matrix, and you see that. I got diffusion. So initially you start, you start from a step function, but now it's not step. This line is slanted a little bit and because things are diffusing. Because again, we have numerical diffusion. Remember we are just solving a direction equation. There was no uh, physical diffusion, but there is numerical diffusion which actually makes this uh, this this thing you know diffusing a bit to the right. So it's not gonna be a right angle anymore. Okay. So this is alpha less than 1. What if I make alpha bigger than 1? Remember, this is still conditionally stable method. And if alpha is bigger than 1, we still get unstable method. So here's alpha bigger than 1. With v equals 2.5, our alpha is going to be 1 point a bit more than 1. Okay, now we see this instability which is going over time. I'm not actually running it for uh, for you know, for much longer, but you can see that this thing is going over time. So if I just run this for maybe one or two minutes, this is going to basically take over the whole solution, and uh, basically there is nothing left. Nothing is going to be active anymore. So that's what I mean by un uh, by conditional stable. That means if alpha is less than one, you don't see this thing, this and this instability, and if alpha is bigger than one, you do see this stability. All right. So overall, let's see if that will be covered so far. Let's go back to our notes. So uh, 
And let's come here, like Swiftworks and Leapfrog. So Leapfrog was uh, first order in time and second in space. Max Fedrix is also first order in time and second in space. Both used Both used, uh, both are uh, conditionally stable, and alpha has to be less than 1. There's a difference between max vertex and weak fire. In max vertex, we've got numerical diffusion or numerical viscosity, which uh, dissipates the solution. We need uh, this uh, uh, diffusing front wave. But in, in leap fire, you, you still get this really steep. Uh, front of the wave, but you get like a lot of you know, numerical errors or oscillations behind the wave, which we call it you know, st small, small instability. It's, it doesn't make make it doesn't make the method unstable, but you do see these weird oscillations. In light vertex, in contrast, we don't see those weird oscillations, but we get dissipations. So the payoff is basically we get an extra viscosity in there we call it numerical viscosity all right so um so i hope this is convincing enough uh, to show that uh, which method is uh, more accurate but basically both of our both of them in terms of accuracy are the same one actually uses numerical diffusivity the other one doesn't so uh, you know, pe people usually prefer this because it doesn't actually come with these weird oscillations, especially if you have a jump in the, in the, in the, in the initial condition or in the concentration or uh, in, the, in the value of the function we are trying to solve. Okay, so again, these oscillations show up, you know, especially when you have a jump in the initial condition. We had one here and then suddenly zero. So after you solve the solution and the, the problem, you see that these things show up. So if the initial condition is not like this, like a smooth bell shape, then you wouldn't see you know, as much of these oscillations. All right, so uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking about another method, which is lax windrop, and that's actually second order in time and second order in space. It's one order higher than lax Fredericks, because lax Fredericks was O del T, the lax squared. Now, lax windrow is, is del t squared and del x squared. All right, so um, stay tuned and thanks for watching. I see you in the next video on lax windrow.